How does it feel having a badge? You were a con, now you have a badge, you're the cop, you're on the good side. Oh man, yeah. Uh, Going oh, Breakout Kings, right? Yeah. yeah, Breakout Kings being a convict. And uh, I tell you what, it makes me respect so much what Dom and Laz had to do on that show in terms of the, uh, all the procedural, um, the exposition and that, and that jargon. So uh, it's, uh, no, it's been fun, man. I love it, you know. Um, playing opposite. It was also a dream come true, I'm telling you. I remember there was one day, my first interrogation scene. I was just like, this is my first time on the other side of the table in my career you know I've been on the opposite side on so many projects uh, throughout the years and it was definitely had a moment when I was like wow I made it to the other side of the table and that was definitely um, what I wanted to do in my career and I'm grateful it happened so how does it feel to be like the one character that doesn't know about <laughs> you know, it's fun. I, I, I like it. You know, like I said, God represents us, the, the, the real world. You know, um, you know, Walking Dead, not a Living Dead. You know, this is uh, you know, our our world exists in the real world. So there's um, there's no way he would know that someone with white hair uh, who talks and thinks and is. Are you a zombie? There's no way, you know, the zombies aren't represented like that in our real world. So it's fun. It's fun playing with that. You know, obviously as an actor, I know I know about the zombie culture, but Clyde doesn't know. You know, Clyde is thinking about, you know, he's just a detective doing his job. You know, and that's all he's thinking about. He's tunnel vision, trying to make a name for himself. Um, so it's it's fun. It's fun. Yeah, he'll believe in psychics. Yeah, he'll believe in psychics. Why? Because psychics exist in the real world, you know. Also, his great aunt Debbie is a psychic, and that was also that was also in the pilot. It was like this monologue. It, it may be on the deleted scenes of the DVD or something, but he gave this long monologue about his his great aunt Debbie being a psychic, which is why he buys it to it. But also, um, she's been right. You know, and that's the thing. He hasn't gotten a problem until her psychic abilities came into, into the picture. And it worked. And he's become a successful and building a name for himself because of those psychic powers. So he goes, I'm all in. I, I'm, I'm, I'm all in. Can you talk at all about what's going to be happening for Clive in the upcoming episodes? Well, I think he's, I think he's going to be, you know, on to major, you know, because his, uh, his lieutenant uh, obviously is, is dead. Um, so I think he'll be on to him because um, he's everything that's in that crime scene connects to major. You know, in terms of the sneakers, he, he never met um, uh, Jerome. He met Jerome through major. Um, also Julian, he met through major. Um, so I think he's gonna, you know, piece that together. And I think he may see more of his personal life. You know, see what he does outside of the, the precinct. Maybe a little love. We'll see. Huh? Romance for five. Romance for five. I like that. Well, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We've been talking about. It. Well, we also talked to Raul about possibly having some of Robbie and Clive adventures. Are we ready for those? Can we have more of those? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I mean, Ra me and Raul and I, we have our own um, life adventures. We're like, if we can incorporate some of those into the to Clive and Robbie adventures, it'll be pretty interesting and fun. Yeah. Well, I think he trusts her at this point. You know, I, I think I think he trusts her. I think they build a connection, a rapport, um, and the facts are the facts. You know, um, you know he before Liv, he was he, he hadn't had a single cop, and now um, you know he's thirteen collars in at this point. So. Um, um, so yeah, I think he just, he, he goes with that. Do you ever get weirded out when she's wearing all that makeup? I mean, it's gotta be tricky to tell. She's all the time. When I think of Rose in my head, she's in that makeup all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I often see her. When I think of Rose, if you ask me to draw a Rose in my head, I'm gonna draw a lip. And then sometimes when I see Rose in life, I'm like, I don't know who that is. <laughs> Or down the street, you know, if Rose hey Mark, I'm like, who, who is this girl? Like, you know, I'm, when we all say that, in my head, because I see her so often, she's, and she's such a trooper with her, that's how she looks in my head. Which, which one of her incarnations is your favorite? Uh, like the mom, or the cheerleader? It was, uh, it was the mom. I love the mom, you know, uh, because it also 
translated to Offset, you know, while you know while we're sitting away. She was just motherly to us, and it was just like, I like this. This is nice. You know, it wasn't fluffy. You want this? Okay, I'll take it. You know. I know, and she just did a great job, such a great job at that. You know, Rose got a big arm, so she trying to show that vulnerability. I thought it was great for her. And then, um, and then at 112, when she played a stoner and the cheerleader brain, brain, I mean, I felt like, you know, I just sat back and watched. And sat there, and I mean, she had the entire crew rolling. And we was cracking up. So those those were my, those were my two favorites. Who's brain would you like to do? If I can have only one brain, um, I, you know, I, I said I've been I've been reading a lot about Ali, so I would say my you know it's, it's a serious answer, but uh, but Muhammad Ali in his prime, Muhammad Ali, I, I think just fearlessness, you know, I think just only his power, I think what he was doing at the time and what, what he represented um, was was incredible, you know, I would I would I would love to know what that feel like for. Yeah. For a minute, you know, but I think he was. I think he was. I think he was. I think he was incredible. In what, what he represented was incredible. And I also boxed too, so that's why I've been there. Is Blaney even on Sky's radar at this point, or is he just completely oblivious to Blaney's world? Completely, absolutely oblivious at this point. I mean, there's only one scene I have with or David, um, and that was just to investigate the murder of the, the kid who was killed. Uh, who, who worked there and was killed. Um, but at this point, no, nope. I have no idea. I think he's the guy who works at the Is he going to get some like, spider tingly feelings when the plane starts hanging around the lab? Yeah, you know, actually, he is because I, um, in, 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 that, in, that, in that crime scene at the end, um, the lieutenant wrote Blaine De Beers. He wrote his name out. So I think I think Clyde is going to piece together that, you know, once they figure out that, wait a minute, that's the lieutenant blood. I'm sure they're going to run some forensics to find that out. And um, it's a it's a clue, you know. It's a it's a break one. So I think it's definitely going to lead down the green trail. Is there going to be a new boss of the precinct? That's a good question. You know, the, yeah. I mean, I I, I think I mean because there has to be a new lieutenant. You know, there has to be somebody to answer for. I wonder who that's going to be. That's going to be interesting. Yeah.